Uh, you are on the front page of the Observer this morning, a warning that a million people may come here from Turkey in the next eight years, which is strange because very few people expect Turkey to join the EU in the next eight years. I think it's, it's very likely that they will, um, in part because of the migrant crisis. Uh, it's escalating and in, uh, speeding up uh, Turkey in particular, but other accession countries uh, coming in. The Remain side and Vote Leave agree on much uh, about uh, Turkey and migrant numbers. The Home Secretary herself, a, a Remainer, made a speech earlier in the campaign that pointed to uh, questioning the merits of uh, the EU expanding uh, and having a, a land border with Syria, Iraq uh, and I Iran. While well, your own colleague Boris Johnson, as we just heard, is pro-Turkey joining the EU. Well, I think you can't... What is, what is dishonest is to say... Uh, is to have a policy of expansion and then at the same time deny member states what they need to mitigate the security risk that comes with it. Theresa May herself has pointed to the problems of terrorism and organised crime that is uh, in these accession countries. Where we disagree is on, is on two issues. It's the, uh, the dishonesty about doing that and then denying us the tools to, to keep our, our safe, uh, um, uh, safe and secure. But it's also that this referendum is going to be our last chance to have a say on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to be consulted or asked to vote on whether we think those In countries or others should, yeah. should join. So well, it's, except, it's, they are going to join. It's a matter the, of when. The British government does have a veto on Turkey joining, so we don't let, have to let them join. No, it, it doesn't. Uh, we, we are not going to be able to have I, say. The I, British I, people I, I aren't thought going accession to was, was something that each country could veto if it wanted to. N no, we, we, uh, I do not think that the EU is going to uh, keep Turkey out. I think it is going to join. I think the migrant crisis is uh, pushing well, it lot, more that way. There's, um, there's a lot of other EU is, countries. What is I'm wrong? Sorry to I mean, well, okay. just, just the, uh, the, the expansion policy is one thing. But if you're going to pursue that policy, and this is where we disagree with the Remain camp, you have got to allow us the tools to protect our own interests, to protect our national security. That we do not have. OK, when it comes to the, uh, the raw numbers and the way this has been framed, there's been talk from, the, from, from your side about the number of Turks who are criminals, the number of Turks who have guns and so on. It's sounding a bit dog whistle. And I remember right at the beginning of this campaign, there's a big fight between Conservatives and the Nigel Farage-led campaign because your lot said, you're just going to go on and on and on about immigration. Here we are a few weeks before the vote and you're going on and on about immigration. Well, those facts and figures are agreed on by both sides of this debate. Uh, what we are arguing is that we, if you're going to have these policies, if you're going to ever expand the, the EU, you have to allow us to mitigate the security risk that, that comes with that. Uh, and I think it is quite wrong that the British people uh, will not be asked uh, their view on this uh, in the future. The referendum is our only chance to say, no, we, we disagree with that. There's been a lot of kind of grumblings and worry from government, government ministers about what happens to the Conservative Party after this. Since even suggestions are going to be a kind of spiteful reshuffle and people are going to be kicked out um, if they've been on the wrong side. Do you think this is just getting overheated on both sides? Are you worried about what's going to happen to the Conservative family after the referendum? I, I, I'm not. I think the party will come together. And I'm not ashamed that there's passion on, on both sides in my party on this. I think it is a shame that there are a lot of people in the world that, that want us to be frightened right now. But being frightened is not a way to live your life and it's certainly Absolutely not a basis not. On, mm. on making a decision. What I would say to the public, and I fully understand how annoyed they are at this, all the scaremongering and all the, uh, the, the, the false reports that have been coming from the Remain side. What I would say to them is look at what is actually happening. Look at the job figures this week. Look at the money that's pouring into the city. We were a month out from the referendum. There's no okay. jitters on the economy. And also trust their common sense, the great British common sense. Uh, are France and Germany going to stop cooperating with us on trade, on security? No, because it benefits right. them and it benefits us. Let me raise something else that you talked about this morning, which is the effect on the NHS of, mm. of staying inside the EU. Now, we've had two former bosses of the NHS writing the papers today saying, actually, 
the, N the NHS will be badly hit if we leave the EU. Why are they wrong? What's your message to Simon Stevens, for instance, who's going to be sitting in that chair shortly? Well, I think the, the NHS to thrive needs two things. I think if we left the EU, we will obviously have that £10 billion dividend. Um, extra money is always, uh, always helpful. But I think it needs something and else as well. would that go to the NHS? Well, it would be for, for future governments to decide. But I certainly think that the British public would probably put the NHS and the social care that surrounds it pretty high up the, the top of their list of priorities, if not at the top. So money is important. We would have, we would have more chance of, of spending more money on the NHS with that with that dividend but I think it needs something else as well and this has been a problem historically for the NHS it needs the ability to plan better and the problem with uncontrolled immigration is that it is impossible for our public services to plan whether it's our hospitals and A&E particularly has been affected by this or whether it's school place provision that is very difficult unless you can have control unless you can control the numbers coming in and you can uh, you can mm. give our public services some chance of, of making the provision they need. Do you think it's wrong for senior members, of, uh, senior civil servants who've been involved in the NHS, administrators, to wade into a public debate like this? Do you think it should be left to politicians? Or is it fair for people like the Governor of the Bank of England, people like the Chief Executive of the NHS, to become involved in this national debate? I think that the public have got tired of this constant stream of hysteria from the establishment. I think that we're going to get more of this, but I think it is not going to have traction with the public. They are, they are fed up of it. I think there have been some quite exceptional interventions. My colleague Andrea Ledson pointed to Mark Carney's intervention, which I think was, uh, was the tipping point, if you like, right. when people realised actually so there is another agenda going on. You think here. it's an establishment stitch up, to put it brutally? Uh, I, think, I think so. I think the, um, uh, the public uh, are, are seeing through this. Um, and I think that uh, at moments in our, our history, uh, 1939, uh, uh, you know, uh, 1982, well. I'm for Portsmouth, um, you know, we have uh, gone against the orthodoxy of the establishment. We have stood up and said, mm. no, we're not going to be a nation of followers, we're going to be a nation of leaders. And that's but what we need see, to happen in this the, referendum. The Prime Minister would say we have led in Europe on big security issues, standing up to Putin at the time of the Crimean invasion and so forth. We have been very, very important there. There is such a thing as the West, and us leaving the EU does help to fragment the West at what is a very dangerous time. We do have enemies out there. Mm. Well, without democracy at the heart of Europe's institutions, uh, the, the idea of a strong, secure, peaceful Europe yeah. is dead. Right. We need democracy to be restored to the, to the heart of Europe. The EU, on its current trajectory, is totally counter to that. And by us voting to leave, by us voting to get a better deal for ourselves and what we need to thrive, we will also be providing that leadership which gives other European nations the permission to say, me too. But it is a coming together of democracies and I just want to return to this business because I'm pretty sure that we do have a veto over stopping Turkey joining if we want to. Uh, well, Are we, you sure that we, we don't? <laughs> we haven't, uh, I think, with the, the current situation, the migrant crisis and other issues that are going on in the Europe at the moment, that we will be unable to stop Turkey you joining. You think we'll just be and I into think, it? I think the British public, <clears throat> this is a matter uh, for the British people, I think, <clears throat> to decide. And the only shot that they <clears throat> will get at expressing a view on this is... Uh, in this referendum. But if we don't want Turkey in, we can stop Turkey from coming in. I don't think that uh, the UK will be able to, to stop uh, Turkey joining.